Now, let me ask you a more difficult question. Um, so I guess uh, we want to calculate the momentum of the average momentum of this state. Right? That's a reasonable question to ask, right? So if I calculate average momentum of the state, as in if I calculate the expectation value of momentum, what should I get? Do you have some sense of what uh, correct answer for that? I'll just say zero. How many people agree? Not sure. Um, so, well, if your intuition says that it shouldn't be zero, why would you say you don't expect the momentum to be zero? Anyone else here expect the average momentum to be zero other than Gauger? Ben, can you explain why average momentum should be zero? Yeah, the standing wave is a combination of one wave traveling to the right, another wave traveling to the left. So there is, a, so the magnitude of momentum won't be zero, but the momentum with the signs plus minus add up, they are zero. So we should get zero momentum as our answer. Now this is where it, um, I need to introduce a little bit more of the um, formalism than we have so far. So this was all fine to write, right? With the momentum, if I try to write down the same thing, it doesn't quite work. As in, you know, if I try to write down, all right, expectation value of momentum is equal to um, x equals zero to L, probability density times momentum times dx, um, then um, p, uh, I'm treating it like a variable, but when you look at this wave function, there's not a single p. So here is where you have to be careful in how you measure um, momentum. How, what, how did we talk about measuring momentum before exam two? We talked about some mathematical procedure we can use to get the values of momentum. Operator. We use operators. We introduced this momentum <laughs> operator. Momentum operator of, I think a minus i h bar partial derivative with respect to x. Is that coming back? Yes, no? All right, so when we want to measure momentum, this is what we would do. We would say, uh, apply momentum operator to some momentum eigenvalue, I'm sorry, momentum eigen uh, function, I guess in the position representation. Then if it's a momentum eigen function, then you should get the same function back. And then you would have momentum as a number in front of the function. And this is what we saw with the traveling wave solution, right? Is that ringing a bell? Yes? When we, uh, when we were dealing with this, so this is an actual momentum eigen function. Uh, let me write it down as a time dependent wave function. This traveling wave, plane wave solution, um, some amplitude times e to the i, kx minus omega t. This was a momentum eigen function. It has momentum traveling in one direction, momentum value of h bar k, and all of that came out when you apply the momentum operator. That rings a bell? Yes? Now, these are not momentum eigen function. And you can kind of see that here, because um, when you apply the momentum operator, you don't get the same function back. And the reason for that is, well, it doesn't have one definite value of momentum. It has at least two values of momentum, possibly more. So if we wanted to use this process to simply try to measure momentum, you can, because there's not one single value to measure. But what you can do is you can calculate the average momentum. And that's where this process of expectation value comes in. 
And I was kind of a bit sloppy in writing this version. Let me be a little bit more careful in writing down the, the actual correct formula for expectation value for any general operator. So this is how it should have been written. It should have been written this way. Um, the, so you have the measurement of the value. So it would be the operator acting on the wave function. So this is the Oper <laughs> this is the mathematical procedure that takes a measurement of the value. And in the case where this is a combination of different uh, momentum eigenvalue states, as in this state is combination of uh, different momentum states, then this one give you a clean result like this. So to get the expectation value, what you do is take this, Multiply it by the, the uh, complex conjugate of the wave function. And then take the integral uh, with respect to the, this coordinate variable x over all space. Or in our case, what all space is ends up being just the x, from x equals 0 to l. And you can kind of see that if we use this operation, back here, this was all just fine. Because x, it's just multiplication by a scalar. It just moves through different places. This is where you have to be careful. Because when you are acting with a derivative operator, the order matters. <laughs> so, so that's why I have to be more careful here. Okay, let me go through the calculation and see if we get what we uh, were intuitively expecting to get, that our momentum should be zero. Okay. So, all right, um, let me write it out. So it goes from, uh, integral goes from x equals zero to L. This, uh, well, these are all real value the functions, so the complex conjugate doesn't do anything. So square root of two over L, uh, sine of n pi x over l. I'll just keep it as general n again. Whatever the n value is, it should still be zero. Times the momentum operator minus i h bar, derivative with respect to x, and then the function, square root of 2 over l, sine of n pi x over l. Dx. Yeah. All right, uh, let me pull out all the uh, constant coefficients in front so that they are not bothering me. I have square root of 2L, 2 over those, so 2 over L. Uh, I have minus I h bar. Uh, let me rewrite it this way, h bar over I, because it's, I don't know, it looks simpler to me. Um, and I think I can uh, write down the rest. So it's still under the integral. Uh, I have this function still, sine of n pi x over l times, okay, I have to do this derivative. So use the chain rule. The factor inside comes out. So I have, uh, I guess, uh, let me keep track of the factor here. Um, so. So factor that comes out, when I take one derivative, that's going to be n pi over L, right? And the derivative of this is outside. So derivative cosine, sorry, sine gives me cosine of n pi x over L. And the derivative of the inside gives me the factor n pi over L, which I put out here. And I guess I'm done, dx. Before I go any further, anybody here know by sight uh, what this integral should be? If you have enough experience with the trig identities, you might recognize it now. If not, I can spell it out. Not yet? Double angle formula. Yeah, you use double angle formula that'll quickly tell you what it is. 
So this is the formula I'm using. Sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 sine of theta cosine of theta. Because that's what I'm seeing here. Sine of angle times cosine of angle. So what I can rewrite this as is uh, sine of 2 n pi x over L, I guess, divide by 1 half or multiply by 1 half. What is the integral of this from x equals 0 to L? 0. It's an integration of a sine function from x equals 0 to L plug in L. It's 2 pi n, or the integer multiple of a cycle. So yeah, so this entire integral, when you look through those expressions, ends up being 0, meaning all these factors don't matter. It's 0. So yeah, you get expectation value of the momentum to be zero, which is much more hoping to get. <laughs>